Today I made an absolutely massive batch of sweet feed moonshine and I'm here to show you how I did it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Kalen from Big Red's Authentic Shine and today I made this, a big old bucket of sweet feed moonshine. You may ask yourself, Kalen, Kalen, how did you turn 100 pounds of sugar, 50 pounds of animal feed, and a hell of a lot of water into something that looks somewhat drinkable? Well, let's get into it. See, Sweet Feed Moonshine is a really interesting recipe because at the end of the day, it is just a sugar mash, but because of the oats, barley, wheat, and the molasses coating all of it, it ends up tasting absolutely delicious. Personally, it's one of my favorite sugar shine recipes of all time. It also has a pretty interesting origin. Sweet Feed Moonshine is kind of based off of an old school moonshine recipe from Prohibition. Any recipe that you see that's kind of like animal feed and sugar, that's likely from an old school moonshine. To start, you're gonna need water, yeast, sugar, sweet feed, a fermenter, a pot, a spoon, and one of these. Okay, so start by boiling a hell of a lot of water. Next, add your sweet feed into the bottom of the bucket. Personally, I'm gonna be using a little bit of corn just because I have some amylase and corn I wanna get rid of. Okay, so the amylase packet says to use a specific amount, but I'm really just gonna eyeball it. I just wanna get rid of this and use up some of my corn. Also, once you feel that your sweet feed's been properly soaked, Begin adding in the sugar and some more boiling water to help dissolve that. Because I'm using a 200 liter fermenter here, I'm using about 100 pounds of sugar. I find I like to get it from Costco because it's the cheapest. Once the sugar is in there, begin adding some more hot water to dissolve it. I know you're boiling a lot of water here. You can also add some lemon juice and yeast nutrient in at this time. Lemon juice is gonna help lower the pH to help the yeast have a more suitable environment. And yeast nutrient is gonna help to ensure that the yeast is healthy and happy. Once all the sugars have been properly dissolved, I like to just take my hose and shoot it in there. Today I'm using Vodka Pure Turbo Yeast. It's not the biggest fan of turbo yeast. Let's see how it goes. Okay, and don't forget to check your gravity. Right now, this sucker's sitting at around 8%, which I am perfectly happy with, because I'm just trying to get rid of some ingredients right now. Now that the yeast is in there, we're pretty much done. I'm gonna slap a big old garbage bag over this, seal it up, and let it ferment for the next couple days. One eternity later. Okay, now that it's been a couple weeks, it's finally time for the exciting part. Go, check your sugars, make sure absolutely everything is done fermenting, and we can begin this fillet. Okay, so first, because we use grain for this mash, you're gonna have to siphon off all that, which is a bit of a hassle. Unless, of course, you have the really expensive, fancy steam stills. Ooh, but then you wouldn't be taking advice and watching this video. Okay, so to remove all the solids to make sure we don't have any scorching, I'm gonna be using a siphon and a strainer. And I can't stress this enough, make sure you get all the grains out because if even one's in there, it can burn and ruin your entire thing of moonshine. For this whiskey, we're gonna be doing two distillations, a stripping run and a spear run. If you don't know what a stripping run is, it's normally the first distillation and it basically just involves getting out as much alcohol as we can, not making any cuts, not caring about the alcohol percentage, but just trying to separate as much of it as we can. For this whiskey, I'm gonna have to do four beer runs because my boiler is only 50 liters and today we used a 200 liter fermenter. You know my personal favorite part of all this is carrying the keg of burning hot liquid to somewhere to dump it. Oh you know and in traditional big red fashion why would I not distill in the middle of the night? Okay, so I ended up having to do four stripping runs, but now it is finally time for the spirit run. Okay, together all the low wines are a little high, sitting about 55%. I'm gonna add in a bit of water to proof it down. Okay, now with that, I'm gonna check the new proof. Okay. It says it's just under 40%, which is perfect. Okay, the still's heating up, and we got the first couple drips of four shots coming off, which means it's time to dump them. Okay, so we're about two liters into the run, including four shots and all that, and my God, that is tasting so good. And coming off the still right now for the spirit run, we're looking at about 80%, which is 
exactly what you'd expect. That's perfect. Okay, so I've gotten a lot more out of this than I thought. I thought by now that it'd be tasting really bad, but it's definitely getting almost into the tails. Still though, it's tasting really nice. Okay, this is the first jar that hasn't tasted amazing. So I think I'm just gonna cut it here because I've got plenty of jars I love and this one I'm not gonna put in. And likely anyone after it is gonna taste just as bad. Okay, distillation is fully complete. We're finished, which only means one thing, blending time. All right, so when you're distilling, different flavors and chemicals and compounds get released, which basically affects the flavor of every single jar. At the start, you'll kind of get more of the medicinal acetone flavor, and then as you get to the end, eventually you get to wet dog and cardboard. Okay, so to figure out which jars taste good and that I want to put in my blend, I'm gonna just go through and taste almost every single jar until I find the end point and the start point and like the nice flavors in the middle. Okay. Let's get into it. Jar number three technically, but jar number one. Really strong kind of alcohol sharpness, but still like really floral notes and stuff in that. Quite good actually. I can smell you. Floral, but not great. Also, I haven't blended a ton of whiskey before, so I really don't know what I'm looking for. It's a bit of an experiment. Now that's cool. That's a really interesting flavor. Maybe pile. That's a yes. Okay, so I have to catch a flight in about five hours, so I'm not gonna drink every single jar. I'm gonna skip a few and try and catch it on the end. I don't recommend doing this. Jar number like seven. Okay, so that last jar wasn't quite tailsy, but it was getting funky. This might be the last one. I think I kind of gauged it right. Okay, I got six jars. I'm gonna blend these up. It's bad though, because I kind of like a lot of the flavors in the tails. So my runs are often a little bit tails heavy. Oh well. At this stage, you can begin proofing this down. To do that, you're basically just gonna use a hydrometer and a little test tube with an alcohol calculator. Personally, I'm not gonna be doing that because I want some 80% whiskey. Well, I don't even know if I can call this whiskey. Sweet Feed Moonshine. I want some 80% Sweet Feed Moonshine. So I'm just gonna bottle this as is and throw a bit of oak in it. Okay, and I'm gonna put some oak chips in these just to, you know, give them a bit of flavor. I'm gonna leave them for a couple months. See what happens. And now the part we've all been waiting for. How does it taste? Oh, it smells all right. On the nose, you smell a lot of the sugar from the sugar wash, because that, at the end of the day, that was the base. You do get a bit of the oats and this like kind of sweet feed smell. A lot of corn. You actually get like a surprisingly high, but I also did add extra corn. First sip on the palate, that is really good. Oh my God. That's delicious. You get a bit of the sugar, but you also get a lot of that corn and kind of other sweet feed flavors. It's not bad at all. Okay, that's all for now. Enjoy making some moonshine and I'll catch you in the next one.